Well, hello, greetings students, second grade students in Miss Butcher's class. My name is Michael Sampson, and I'm here to share with you something about reading and read one of my books to you. Yes, I'm a picture book author and a chapter book author. I've written about 30 books, uh, including some that you probably read when you were younger. For example, maybe you read the book Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Well, I didn't write that, but I wrote the sequels to it, including Panda Bear, Panda Bear, What Do You See? And Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? And Baby Bear, Baby Bear, What Do You See? That you probably read in kindergarten. I also uh, worked with Bill Martin on the sequel to Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, which we call Chicka Chicka One, Two, Three. But since you're in second grade, I think I'll read you uh, a short chapter picture book. And it's a true story about a dog that we found on the golf course. So the name of the book is Caddy the Golf Dog. So gather up a chair, boys and girls, and let's enjoy, enjoy the story of Caddy. And this is how it all happened. Jennifer cradled the dog in her arms and cried softly. Her dad had warned her that she couldn't keep the stray that had shown up on her doorstep. But for the past few days, Diamond had been her best friend. And here's a picture of Diamond and Jennifer. We don't have enough room for a dog, sweetheart, her dad said. Tomorrow we'll find her a home. Jennifer held Diamond tight in her arms, petting her and tracing the diamond on her forehead with her finger. As she put the dog in the backyard for the night, she said, Have a good night, Diamond. I'll see you in the morning. And that's a promise. But that night a terrible storm came. Thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and Diamond ran around the yard barking loudly. She was so frightened. Suddenly there was an explosion as the lightning struck the big tree in the backyard. As the tree fell, it knocked the back fence down, and off Diamond ran, her heart pounding and her feet churning. By the time morning came, the storm had ended. Diamond had stopped running, but all the houses were strange new ones. She didn't know how to make her way back to Jennifer. Diamond was lost again and all alone in the world, and it was so sad. Cold, wet, and hungry, Diamond traveled down the road. The course was beautiful, with rolling hills of green grass, trees, white sand, and blue lakes. Diamond roamed the course, searching for a friendly face. Near the sixth tee, Diamond saw two boys in a golf cart. And here's the picture that goes with those words. And they saw her. Look, John, a dog, shouted Josh. And Diamond jumped into the golf cart with the boys. The boy's father turned from his shot when he heard the boy's laughter. Shh, he said, I'm trying to concentrate. Mr. Tyler couldn't believe his eyes when he saw Diamond with her tongue hanging out, sitting between the boys in the golf cart. Well, he said, it looks like you have a friend. And they did. At every hole, Diamond jumped out of the cart, watched the boys hit their shots, and ran to show them where their balls landed. And sometimes she even brought the ball back to them. The boys named her. They named her Caddy because she helped them with every golf shot, just like a golf caddy would. Now Diamond had a new dame and a new family. Finally, at the 16th home, Josh asked, Dad, can we keep Caddy? She's a great dog. Oh, boys, we're too busy to take care of a dog, Dad said. Besides, she's too friendly to be homeless. I'm sure she has a family who loves her. Caddy whined because she thought this was her new family. And the sad sound told the boys that their dad was wrong. Oh, and here's the picture that goes with that page. The boys played more and more slowly, but soon they were at the 18th hole and it was time to go home. The boys hugged Caddy as they begged their dad, please, let's take her home. Finally, dad agreed to ask the lady who ran the pro shop about Caddy. I'm sure she's a stray, the lady said. People are always dropping animals off here, but I'll tell you what, leave your name and number. I'll call you if no one claims her. As they were getting to the car, Josh whispered, stay here, Caddy. We'll be back for you tomorrow. And that's a promise. At home, the boys talked and talked about Caddy. They talked about how she found the lost ball. They talked about how smart she was. And they talked about the way she wiggled every time a kind word was said to her. Neither boy knew what kind of dog Caddy was. She looks like a German Shepherd, John said, 
The German shepherds don't have blue eyes and gray specks on their coats, said Josh. Hey, I know how we can settle this, John said. Let's go online and see if we can find a dog that looks like Caddy. So the boys did an internet search and learned that Caddy was a blue healer, or also called an Australian cattle dog. Early the next morning, the toddler's phone rang. It was the lady from the golf course. That dog barked all night long. As far as I'm concerned, she's yours. Please come and take her away. And so they did. Caddy loved her new home and all the attention she received. It was a happy but busy day. Caddy had to visit the veterinarian. Dog food had to be bought. A bed had to be made. And she had to be bathed. <clears throat> that night, Caddy slept well with her stomach full of food. It had been a wonderful day. During the next few weeks, Caddy became part of the Tyler family. She ran through the woods with the boys. She swam with the pond. She brought the paper to the front door each morning. And every Saturday, she played golf with the boys. But despite all the exercise, she started to grow fat. One Friday morning, John discovered that Caddy was gone. John and Josh called and called her name, but she did not return. The boys searched everywhere through the woods, down the road, and even at the golf course. But Caddy was nowhere to be found. That night, two sad and lonely boys worried about their dog. Was she afraid? Was she hungry? When morning came, there was still no sign of Caddy. It was Saturday, but the boys could not bear to go golfing without Caddy. Instead, they searched the woods again. As the boys approached a big hollow oak tree, they heard a whining sound. Here, Caddy, here, Caddy, they called. Inside the hole, they found Caddy and five puppies. And this is what they looked like. One even had a diamond on her forehead, just like Caddy. Josh and John moved the puppies back to the house and did their best to help Caddy take care of them. A bed of quilts was prepared in the corner of the garage and Caddy was given all the food she could eat. In about a week, the puppies opened their eyes. Soon they were walking, and two weeks later, the trouble began. The puppies loved to chew, and chew they did. They chewed up one of John's shirts. They chewed up Josh's baseball glove. And one day, Mr. Tyler found his golf shoes in the driveway, all chewed up. <clears throat> in spite of this, the boys loved the puppies, and the puppies loved the boys. When Caddy's puppies were six weeks old, Mr. Tyler placed an ad in the newspaper, offering them for free. That Saturday, the boys didn't play golf with their father. They stayed at home to see who would come to adopt the puppies. Four families came, and each family took a puppy home with them. The boys were both sad and happy. Sad to tell the puppies goodbye, but happy the puppies were going to good homes. Now only one puppy remained, the little one, with a diamond on her forehead. That night, when the boys said their prayers, they prayed, Dear God, please let Caddy's last puppy find a good home. On the other side of town, Jennifer's dad called her into the living room. He had the newspaper in his hand. Jenny, he said, I'm sorry about Diamond. I should have let her stay in the house the night of the tornado. I don't know how to say this, but I made a big mistake. Can you, will you... Forgive me, please. Jennifer answered with a big hug and a happy smile. I know that we can never replace Diamond, Jenny, but would you like a puppy? Jennifer squealed as she grabbed the paper. She couldn't believe her eyes when she read the headline, Free Blue Healer Puppies. She rushed to the telephone. Her voice trembling, she asked, Do, do you have any puppies left? One, said a boy on the other end of the line. Hooray, shouted Jennifer. We'll be right there. And where do you live? Thirty minutes later, Jennifer and her dad arrived. And there stood Caddy and her puppy. Jennifer couldn't believe her eyes. Could this be her missing diamond? But there was no hesitation from Caddy, who greeted Jennifer with a happy bark and wet licks. Caddy's puppy licked Jennifer, too. Here's the reunion. The two families talked about how the boys had found Diamond and why they named her Caddy. Then they talked about where she should live. We must ask Caddy. 
said, John, she should decide where we'll live, where she will live. So this is what they decided to do. Jennifer stood at one side of the yard and called, Here, Diamond, here, Diamond. And Josh and John stood at the other side of the yard and called, Here, Caddy, here, Caddy. For one second, Caddy did not know what to do. Then she started to remember. She remembered running through the woods with the boys. She remembered the trees where her puppies had been born. She remembered all the adventures and fun she had had at the Tyler's place and the love that Josh and John shown her. She made her decision. She tried it to the boys. Jennifer watched in dismay as her diamond, now Caddy, walked away. But then she felt a little wet tongue licking her ankle. She looked down to see a little puppy with the diamond on her forehead looking up to her with deep blue eyes. With love in her heart, Jennifer picked up the puppy and said, Hi, Diamond. It's time for us to go home. The end. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story of Caddy the Gop Dog, the two story. If you want to learn more about Caddy, you can go to my webpage, www.michaelsampson.com. And there's a link that shows the actual caddy and the puppies and the real, and the real John and Josh. So check that out. I've enjoyed uh, spending this time with you. And during this break away from school, I encourage you to read a book a day. Because as you read books, you add words and vocabulary and language and stories to your brain. And that will make you a better writer as well as a better reader. Goodbye, boys and girls. Goodbye, Miss Butcher.